Praise God again, from whom all of our blessings flow. This is Pastor Ivory Jones III of the Grace Missionary Baptist Church, Cleveland, Ohio, as we continue in the inspiration and motivation of God's Word through faith, through the study, memorization, and comprehension of the Holy Writ. The Bible is a living document. It's alive. It is the rhema word. It is the logos, the intended original word who is Jesus Christ, who is the word living, breathing, and moving through the universe with a word of hope and with a word of grace, with a word of reconciliation, with a word of salvation. Uh, this is Pastor Jones and Grace. We're praying continuously for one another and for our sister churches as well as our community, the Mount Pleasant area of Cleveland. We're located at East 131st Street, 3742 East 131st Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44120. And we pray that we inspire you and we continue to keep strength and faith in your hearts through just fellowship and through communion and through uh, looking into the good book and studying the word of the Lord. He called pastors, he called men and women and many of many cultures and backgrounds to just be oracles, to carry the torch, to light the torch and to keep the flame uh, bright of truth and of love through the written word of the Lord. Father, bless your word today as it goes forth, as we continue to study, remember, and faithfully teach that which we have been taught. In Jesus' name, we claim it and we believe it and we receive it. And in the name of Jesus, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. As we continue to look at the providence of God, I know I've been wearing you out on this thought, but that's good because we need more and more of the providence of God. Anything worth having is worth going through the regimen to get to and get through in order to obtain and obsess. We ought to be at a place where we really recognize who God is and how much God loves us uh, through his providential care and love in all of our lives. We have to continue to put faith to practice as we pray and understand that uh, God is just a God of all blessing and all comfort. In our old Negro spirituals, there were songs that spoke uh, more about he and him rather than more about my and me. Uh, they were songs of adoration that looked to the creator. Over my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. And we would sing those songs, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. And all those great songs of, uh, soon I'll be done with the troubles of this world and I'll go home to live with God. If we didn't know much, one thing we did know and do know today as a people is that God is real. Yes, God is real in my soul. And so we continue to walk and talk and to stand and to, uh, I call it striving in his presence, uh, striving in his presence uh, through our faith and our trust in him. Mama and daddy had their faith. Big mama and grandpapa had their faith. Sister and brothers may have their faith sons and daughters, but you better have your faith in God, in and of yourself, through the belief and trust of who God is and what great things he has done in all of our lives. As we study the providence of God, we've been understanding uh, that he is self-existent. Uh, he doesn't need uh, anybody's approval. He does not need anyone's opinion. He doesn't have to have a network or any type of news broadcast to uh, keep up with what he's doing and keep him on track. He doesn't need any Senate or Congress to vote or veto or vote in any of his interactions. God is just the uh, controller, the CEO of life. He is a good God, righteous and just, gracious and merciful, loving and kind. And he is uh, a God who is just. I love that word just. That word just is a carpenter's term. It's a term of um, equality. It's a, a term of justice. It's a term of righteousness. 
it means that the measurement of God will always measure up to exactly uh, who and what he said he will be and who he is and what he said he would do. He is just, meaning that if he says that we're wrong, if he says we're in error, if he said that sin is abiding, then there is no error or no mistake. There is no accident or incident. There is no mishap in his understanding or his comprehension or his estimation of our plight. When God says we're wrong, we're wrong. When God says we're right, we're right. When God says we're weak, we're weak. God says we're strong, we're strong. And I believe that's why Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because a person who is poor in spirit recognizes their bankruptcy and that the fact that they are without God, they are unable, incapable of even surviving. A poor in spirit says that no matter what I possess physically, spiritually, I'm just bankrupt. Spiritually, I'm just Without spiritually, I don't have anything going on. I need God to give me what he has for me in order to gain strength and walk and talk in the light of his goodness. God faithfully cares for us as our shepherd. You remember the shepherd psalm? The 22nd number of the psalm talks about the uh, good shepherd. And then the uh, 24th number talks about the uh, chief shepherd. But here in the 23rd psalm, he talks about the great shepherd. And you've heard this before. And the fact is God cares for us through his uh, shepherding us. When you read Psalm 23, also read Psalm 22 and 24. Read them all together. They're entitled the shepherd psalms the shepherd's psalms that help us to understand that God not only guides and gives to us, but he provides and protects us, and then he cares for us, and he comforts us, okay? And then he leads us, and he loves us. God is just that kind of God and shepherd, that a shepherd that we shall not want. And when we please him, he makes even our enemies be at peace with us. When we please God, he will cause those cantankerous individuals, those um, negative folk, he will take enemy territory and give you triumph and favor in the midst of your foes. Proverbs 16 verse 7 says, when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. Even your enemies can't do nothing with your gift, with your love, with your character, with your faith, with your testimony. When you're pleasing God, even your enemies, your enemies, that's why you don't have to worry about critics who are crucial concerning uh, the critique of your life. Uh, don't worry about ind individuals who have an underestimation of that which God have blessed you and favored you in. Don't ever be apologetic about being blessed and being uh, gifted and being uh, used by the Lord. Uh, we have to understand that even we have enemies, some of us in our best and best of intentions, best of love, best of aim, best of goal. You will have people who either will not like you, not care for you, and then some folk will take a position, juxtaposition you in an enemy stance. All right, they won't like you for your look, for your family, for your heritage, your history, uh, for your whatever. The enemies are often all around us. But Proverbs 16 verse 7 tells us that you keep pleasing God and even your enemies will have a way of giving you applause and they won't understand why they're clapping. Amen. And uh, we have to understand that all of the rulers of the world are under God's control. All rulers, all leaders, all individuals who are in authority are under the control of God. Look at Proverbs uh, 21 verse 1. Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course wherever he pleases. Amen. The higher up we go, uh-oh, we're in a place where we have to give resignation to God. We have to give homage and respect and a tribute to God. We have to be in a place where when God lifts you up, it's a place where we rediscover 
how much he really means and he does for us in our lives. And because he is sovereign, we've been talking about that word, uh, his plan is in his sovereignty, um, his plan will come to pass and he will carry out his orchestration and plan for our lives. And we read that in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. He says, I make known the end from the beginning. I make known the end from the beginning. In other words, God has already written in the chapters. He's already did all of the highlighting. He's already did the punctuations and the dictations and the orchestration. And he has written in everything for us. He says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Listen to the Lord, his sovereign. This is a great scripture concerning the sovereignty of God, the sovereignty of God. I will make known the end from the beginning and from ancient times what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do that. I please. God does what he pleases. He does what he pleases. He's not mean or cruel or evil. He cannot promote evil or do uh, bad. He cannot be tempted with evil. He's just the epitome of goodness and righteousness and grace and love and holiness. He's the epitome of it. He allows us to participate in who he is and what he is doing. That's why you have to go through sin, shame, and sorrow. Excuse me from the Christian who's never fall, fell, who never had an accident, incident, haven't had a fault or a failure, never been wrong, never been shamed, never had a, 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 a discussion or a discourse with sin. Amen. Because those who have been there and done that know what the saving grace and the redeeming and the righteous rescue of God is really all about. And we can appreciate the word grace even better. That it's not only God's riches at Christ's expense, but it's an extension of our celebration and response to who God is and what God has done in our lives. In other words, grace is more magnified and it comes more to life when I begin to participate in my own recovery and participate in my own rescue and the righteousness of God. Being the righteousness of God through God, through Christ, being the righteousness of God because he has made me righteous through his divine rescue and reaching touch and healing, salvation, deliverance, etc. And so once we are delivered, we are delivered. Once we're saved, we're saved, but we're still being delivered and being saved from what? Not from the penalty of sin, but from that powerful presence and prevalent pleasure of sin and he takes all that away and then one day we'll be in that place of total deliverance and sanctification from to in God in celebrating who he is because God's divine providence my 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 because of who he is and what he is doing let me read one more scripture it is God who gives rain and we pray for rain in the time of need you heard the story of uh, this little town needed some rain. You heard it. And uh, they had uh, they needed to pray for rain because they were farmers and they lived uh, from the earth and uh, from tilling the ground and uh, from the produce and the seasons. And they were not getting any rain. And without rain, uh, then the seed cannot uh, take on root and uh, allow the sun to uh, and the rain to work together for growth. And so they called a prayer meeting and everybody showed up, all the big shots and the little shots, all the men and the women, all the community, those who were down the road, those who were up, showed up for the prayer meeting. They all showed up. Everybody was there. And uh, one lady shows up and she comes in with these big galoshes on and this big old raincoat and this big old umbrella that she didn't even have clothes. She had it open. And she came through the door of the church with the umbrella. And they asked her, uh, are you disrespecting God's house? Are you making mockery of this prayer meeting? We're praying for rain. And here you come in dressed up like it's Halloween with this uh, rain uh, garment on. 
And she said, no, you're insulting me. Y'all said y'all were praying for rain. So since I, I'm praying for rain, I thought I would show up as if I had some sense. And I'm show up with my faith because if I pray for rain, I expect the Lord to bring the rain because God is the one who brings the rain. Well, look at what Zechariah 10, 1 says, ask the Lord for rain in the springtime. It is the Lord who makes the storm clouds. He gives showers of rain to men and plants of the field to everyone. Amen. There's a time when we want it to rain. We need it to rain. We need the Lord to wash away coronavirus, to wash away, wash away the pandemic, to wash away through the vaccine, uh, through doctors, first responders, through uh, us working together, through us doing those things that are apropos for the rain to fall. So God can wash it away through his divine providence and take away the malady and uh, the misfortune of this present moment. So in God's divine providence, we understand that God is in control. He sits high and he looks low. He has a hand full of power and a heart filled with love. Uh, and even in times of grief, in times of grief, his providence shows us mercy. How many people are grieving and hurting and in trouble and in pain and disarray and sadness and sorrow and hearts are bleeding and aching in pain over grief, over loss, over sadness, over sickness, and even over death. God is able to comfort through his divine providence and console even the deepest ache and hurt from this particular moment in time. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 31 through 33. Men are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. He doesn't do it willingly because of where we live, how we live in this earth, because of who we are as God's uh, creatures and the midst of God's creation, as we are finite and God is infinite. God still says, I understand what you're going through, and my divine providence is going to carry you through. Here's a word for the day, as we trust in the Lord with all of our heart, as we know that the providence of God will place us where he wants us to be. Let us walk by faith and not by sight. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your miracle of truth that allows us to look up to the hills from whence come all of our help knowing that our help come from Yahweh, come from Jehovah, come from you, God. You sit high and look low with a handful of power and a heart filled with love. And we pray that blessing upon us that you touch, heal, and deliver in Jesus' name. We claim it, we believe it, we receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. God bless you. This is Pastor Jay. God bless you. Hang on in there. Help is on the way. <laughs>